Hello, familia. Uh, Gutierrez, familia. Uh, I wanted to put this video out uh, to share with you a few discoveries I've made uh, through our family tree. Uh, discoveries of real historic significance that I think you'll find very fascinating. So I uh, hope you enjoy this and let's get started. Okay, everyone, this is uh, Ancestry.com, and many of us can trace uh, back our ancestors back to either Leonardo Gutierrez, which is my great-grandfather, or his brother Santana. Um, so let's, let me give you quick photos. Uh, this is my great-grandfather when he was 20 years old, Leonardo Gutierrez. Uh, that, this is, here he is much older. And his brother Santana. Uh, so this was Ramon Gutierrez's uh, father. So this is Santana. You can either trace your relatives back to either Santana or Leonardo uh, for many of us. So here again is Leonardo. Uh, he who happens to be my great-grandfather. Uh, his parents Crescencio Gutierrez and Ana Maria Flores. These are my two times great grandparents. And it's this uh, part of the tree that we're going to be concentrating on here. We're going to be following Ana Maria Flores's uh, uh, ancestral line here. So here's my two times great grandmother, Ana Maria Flores. Her parents were Juan Flores, uh, born in 1828. Guadalupe Trevino, who was born in 1830. And here we're going to continue following Guadalupe Trevino's uh, ancestral line. Uh, again, she was born in 1830, uh, and her parents were Jose Mateas de la Trinidad Trevino and Maria Andrea Trevino. Now, Jose Mateas Trevino, let's take a look at him a little closer. Uh, Let's see where I'm at here. We went through here. He, this is uh, Juan Flores and let me see. Let me try to remember here. Juan Flores and Guadalupe Trevino's marriage record. And I believe this is 1853. And it does state that their uh, Guadalupe Trevino's parents are hija de Mateas Trevino and Andrea Trevino. So everything that you see uh, going backwards, uh, I have documentation such as this that names either uh, their spouse and their, and their parents. So that's how I'm able to establish who's who in the, in the family line. So again, we wanted to take a look at a little closer at Mateas uh, Trevino, which is Guadalupe Trevino's uh, father. This is a baptismal record of 1812. And I found this in the San Ignacio Parish in Revilla, uh, which was Guerrero uh, in Mexico. And they called this area Guerrero Viejo because it no longer stands. And we'll get into a little history about that in a little bit. Uh, but here is the baptismal record. It's March of 1812. And it states here in Primero de Marzo, the 1st of March, uh, 1812. And the priest's name was actually named Jose Antonio Gutierrez. And we're probably related to him somehow. And uh, I'll have to narrow down who he is. But one of the most important things that I found in this document is the fact that they're naming him clearly as Espanol. He's a Spaniard. Uh, clearly, the church is identifying him, not mestizo, not indio, but clearly Espanol. And he is the Siete Dias Nacido. He's only seven days old when they're baptizing him here on March 1st. Uh, and they're baptizing him por nombre Jose Mateas de la Trinidad Nepomuceno, hijo 
de José de Jesús Treviño y de la Doña María Viviana Gutierrez. So let's take a look at them now, because he is the focal point of my entire uh, uh, little history lesson here. Uh, José de Jesús Treviño. Uh, let's take a look at him. He was born the 13th of March, 1786, uh, in San Ignacio de Loyola, Revilla, which is today uh, uh, Tamaulipas, Mexico, uh, the state of Tamaulipas. But in 1786, and I wanted to show you a quick little map. Um, Uh, this is a map of Mexico, basically, uh, of Nueva España, uh, of, of during that time, 1786-1821. And the province of Nuevo Santander uh, extended all the way in here. Of course, this is, again, 1786. This predates uh, Texas. All of this was part of, uh, of Nueva España. And uh, you could see that it went right into, into what is today the state of Texas. Uh, Revilla was located, the old Guerrero Revilla was located right here. And just on the other side of this river uh, is the focal point of, of why I'm putting this video out. I wanted to show you, so here is old Guerrero Rivia on this side of the river, but right on the other side of the river is San Ignacio, Texas. And let's get a closer look so you can see. Uh, okay, San Ignacio, Texas, right on the other side of the river, and old Guerrero Rivia was somewhere out here. The Trevino Uribe Rancho. So let's take a look at that. This is from the Texas State Historical Association. And it talks about San Ignacio, Texas. San Ignacio, the oldest town in Zapata County, is on the Rio Grande and the U.S. Highway 83, 30 miles south of Laredo and 14 miles northwest of Zapata. It was settled in 1830 by former residents of Revilla, now Guerrero Tamulipas, under the leadership of Jesus Trevino. Jesus Trevino, the same Jesus Trevino who happens to be my five times great grandfather. And depending on where you're at on the family tree, uh, you're also related to this man. So, Jesus Trevino actually founded what is today San Ignacio, Texas. The site was in the southwest corner of the original Hacienda de Dolores, a grant made in 1750 by Colonel Jose de Escandón to Jose Vasquez Borrego and was named for the patron saint of Guerrero, San Ignatius, San Ignatius Loyola. In 1830, Trevino built a sandstone home known as Forte Trevino, 100 by 140 feet. Jose Villarreal placed a sundial at the home in 1851. The timepiece has become a tourist attraction. This is the National Historic Landmark nomination. So they were nominating it for a national landmark, a historic landmark uh, back then. And Trevino, this is for the Trevino Ribe Rancho, and there's a couple of things in here that were of historic significance that I wanted to share with you. The rancho is directly associated with the earliest period of Spanish settlement along the Rio of the Lower Rio Grande, specifically with the villas and the ranch ranch communities established in the mid 18th century by Jose de Escandón. Following the formal organization of the Spanish province of Nuevo Santander in 1746, one of the earliest surviving ranchos of the Spanish colonial Mexican frontier period in the United States. The Trevino Uribe complex is directly related to Escandón's 
colonization efforts along the Rio Grande and is perhaps the best representation of his legacy in this country. During, due to the particular harsh environment and hostile natives of the region, only the Villa of L Laredo, the Hacienda of Dolores, and a few scattered ranchos existed on the north bank of the Rio Grande by the end of the 18th century. Despite their tenuous prospects, the ranchos were formally tied to the Spanish villas across the Rio Grande through formal land grants issued on behalf of the King of Spain in 1767. Each of the villas on the south bank laid claim to ranch lands that lay on the opposite shore. Lands including the present village of San Ignacio, Texas, were associated with the Escandon town of Revilla, renamed Guerrero after 1827 and now known as Guerrero Viejo, and identified as Ranchos de Revilla. Braving the harsh elements and hostile natives, Guerrero area rancher Jesus Trevino built a small stone building at Rancho San Ignacio about 1830. In doing so, he founded the first sustained Spanish settlement in the vicinity of present San Ignacio. This is the historical marker that stands today in San Ignacio and it reads, in the late 1820s, Jesus Trevino bought land in a hacienda from the hires of Jose Vasquez Borrego, Trevino, and his family, as well as several residents from nearby Revilla, Mexico, Guerrero, established a ranch and settlement and named it for Revilla's patron saint, San Ignacio de Loyola. In 1830, Trevino moved the ranch upriver, and for his headquarters, he constructed a building of native sandstone in 1851. His son-in-law, Blas Maria Uribe, had Jose Villarreal build and place a sundial on the entrance. Uribe later added other structures forming the compound known today as Fort Trevino or El Fuerte Uribe. Also joined in the discussions surrounding the formation of the Republic of the Rio Grande. He and his brother-in-law, Vicente Gutierrez and Manuel Benavides Garcia, were active leaders in San Ignacio, which became a regional trade center with access to land and river routes. In 1873, Uribe deeded land for Nuestra Señora del Refugio Catholic Church. Later populated by farmers and laborers and following many years as a duty-free border zone, San Ignacio continued to prosper late into the 19th century. The settlement bypassed by the railroad in the 1880s remained viable through its farming and ranching enterprises throughout the years, the area was often involved in political and military operations. In the early 1950s, plans for the Fal Falcon Reservoir posed a threat to the historic town site. A committee headed by Mercurio Mar Martinez successfully petitioned government officials to spare the community. Despite flood damage incurred in 1954, San Ignacio has remained intact today. It is a unique example of a mid-19th century Texas border town with numerous native sandstone structures and is considered the oldest inhabited settlement in Zapata County. All of this culminates to the fact that our ancestor my five times great grandfather, Jesus Trevino, had founded a city in what is today San Ignacio, Texas, and he did this in 1830. It predates the state of Texas. We were here before there was even a state of Texas. You got to remember this is 1830. The Alamo took place, the Battle of the Alamo took place in 1836. And it wasn't until 15 years later that Texas uh, became a state in 1845. So even for 15 years prior to the state of Texas, Jesus Trevino was already at San Ignacio, Texas. Uh, I wanted to make sure that 
everyone in the Gutierrez family uh, understood the historical significance of this. Uh, we had ha we have had family on this side of the border uh, even before this was the state of Texas. I think it's it's significant uh, for all of us uh, to know this and to continue to pass this on, all this information on. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, piece of our family history um, of really is again historic significance. In the coming weeks or a few months, uh, I will be putting together another video where I have traced one of our family lines all the way back to Spain in the 1500s. Uh, again, uh, tied to historical figures um, that uh, our ancestors uh, were part of major parts of history. And uh, I want to share that with you, but uh, at the moment I am piecing together all the information and I want to be able to 100% with confidence to be able to put this out as fact. Um, so I've got a little bit more research to do to tie up all, all the paperwork on that, but uh, that's coming soon. Uh, I'm pretty confident in what, what I'm looking at right now, but uh, we're all the way back into Spain now into the 1500s through the Gutierrez line. Talk to you soon. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, be proud of your Gutierrez heritage uh, because it's long and historical.